Hey, good morning. I'm excited to be here with you this morning. And as I'm going into uh, the second mastermind of this week, something that is completely on my heart and my mind is reputation. And not reputation for me, but reputation for you. It reminds me of every time you walk into a room, whatever you say, whatever comes out of your mouth, whatever, um, you know, whatever you're experiencing that you're sharing with other people actually becomes your reputation. So let me unpack this for you for a second. So like I said, I am going into our second mastermind of the week. And so the beginning of the week, I was in a mastermind with our Pace Private members. And now I'm in a mastermind with our 1% Club and our Marketing Mastery uh, community. And they're going to come in there and they're all going to talk and connect and, and learn a lot over the next couple days. And the way that they speak about their experience as an entrepreneur, their experience as mothers, fathers, um, you know, business owners, friends, the way they're experiencing life it really makes, makes um, I guess you could say it seeds the way other people experience them and it becomes their reputation. So this is something that I caught on really early. I think it's all the personal development books that I read. Uh, I'm one of my favorite, Wayne Dyer, and all of the, all of the, um, just even watching human behavior that when I always noticed that people who were having a hard time with life or who were gossiping always tend to hang out with each other. And by the way, I've been somebody who has gossiped and every time I hear myself talk about somebody, I, I can see the expression on other people's face because it, it just doesn't land right. Like it doesn't, it doesn't feel right and it doesn't land right and people start to actually attach the negative feeling towards you. And so I'm not standing here saying that we're all perfect, but what I am saying is that if you're walking into an event or if you're walking into um, a mastermind or you're going to meet with a group of friends for dinner or you're collaborating with your colleagues, I'm gonna highly recommend, highly recommend that you really watch what comes out of your mouth. Because when you are complaining about something or you're talking about like, if you're like, it's a lot of work, honest to God, somebody still might think you're a powerhouse, but the truth is, is you'll never be that multiple million dollar income earner. Um, I was looking online the other day, even people in corporate America, there are people in corporate America that are making $16 million a year in their positions. So what, what I think is important to here right now is you don't have to be an entrepreneur to make millions of dollars. Um, but you can make millions of dollars as an entrepreneur and you could also make millions of dollars in a corporate situation. Let's just talk about your attitude. Are you the type of person that when you speak like colleagues or other entrepreneurs, like I don't like people in my company when I overhear, not that I don't like people in my company. I love people in my company. I don't like it when I hear people in my company in leadership roles, uh, talking with a heavy heart or any sort of an overwhelm or anything like that because I filed away in my head that I can't take that person to the top unless they change something. Because the way that they speak to an admin person, an executive, to me, anything, what happens is that they're creating a reputation for themselves and they're actually creating a leadership silo around them of you know either power or pressure and if they're pushing pressure with their words then i don't want them leading an army for me meaning that an army internally inside the company let's go to entrepreneurism i have never and neither do top performers ever spend their time with people who are talking about their struggles as if they are weak in them now let me explain the two there's a difference between weakness and vulnerability in the context that I'm talking about. If I was talking in scripture right now, scripture actually says in Corinthians 2 that, that God actually, ha you have the greatest power. His power becomes perfect in your weakness. The only reason why I'm not using weakness in this example is because nobody likes to be weak. But if we could actually be okay with the areas that we're struggling with and not attach a lot of pressure to it when you're talking to people, you're gonna find that people wanna step in and help you. So let me share a little bit about vulnerability. Yesterday I did a talk at the Top Motivators, which is a, a syndicated TV show that is now been picked up globally, which is really awesome. 
And um, congratulations to Lynn and uh, Julie for picking it up and really having a vision to be able to create what they created. They've been working on it for three years before, the, before this is finally now in production. And so um, while I was speaking there, it was, it was actually really cool because Lisa Nichols actually really uh, reiterated with a different style um, what I was talking about, which was generosity. And I was talking about being vulnerable is generous. I was talking about sharing your strengths is generous. And I was talking about sharing your wisdom is generous. And online, we hear a lot of people talk about sharing their wisdom. We do that a lot. A lot of times people don't share their strength because what they do is they put their heads down and they just barrel through something and they get to the finish line, but they don't take a lot of people with them. So they're not sharing their strength. <laughs> Good job, babe. Good job. Um, and so Zach ran up the stairs and my husband's head came up and grabbed him, ran down. Too cute. Um, so a lot of people don't share their strength and what they do is they share their pressure. And, and there, there is pressure and strength. It's not like there isn't Pr pressure is a privilege, but, but they don't typically, they share the pressure, but they don't share the strength. So like, how did you, where did you go in your mind to overcome the obstacle? Like that's the stuff that's useful. The stuff that's not useful is people ahead of me or ahead of you talking about all the pressure because that's like standing in front of, um, like a, a marathon and you're halfway through the marathon and you're feeling like you're going to die. And then the person beside you that just fit or somebody comes ba running backwards down the court or walking backwards down the court on like crutches and is like, oh my God, the last half of this race is brutal. And you're like, oh my God, like, I don't even think I can have another step versus the guy coming down the court saying, you know what? It's worth it. Like I'm done. The I'm done the marathon. Now you've got another half to go. It's the best half. Like, this is where your, your character is built. This is where, like, if you actually just think about your feet right now and get in your feet and they give you some strategies about how to be strong to get to the other half of the race, then more people are going to get to the finish line. But what we do is somehow we get love from sharing pressure. And what we get love for is people start to say, like, congratulations, you, you finished that. Oh, my God, I don't know if I could ever do that. What if we actually put our commitment on sharing with people how they could do that? Instead of sharing all the pressure, share the tactics, the strength, where you went in your head, because it's going to be somewhere you went in your head, and, and what you physically did to be able to finish something really hard. I'm not saying say it's easy when it's not, but I'm saying don't add more pressure to either the people that work with you or, you know, your peers by talking about all the pressure because you're not motivating them to get up and to think that this is worth it. Talk about the pieces that are worth it. Talk about the triumphs that you're, that you, that you found at different moments when you thought you were going to quit so that other people can grab onto that strength and learn from you and go that extra mile. The other part was vulnerability. And that is this whole conversation. Like, um, like, you know, when you've had those moments where you've had your knees up at your chest and you've rocked yourself in the bathroom or in your bedroom or cried in a journal and you're like, oh, like, please, God, help me in this moment. Like, either change that situation or change me or do whatever you need to do. But like, please, some people are praying, just please let me get okay with the situation I'm dealing with. And, and instead of sharing those moments with just you and God or you and your best friend, I even know best friends who don't share these things, right? It's like, we, we have developed this, this hard shell and somehow women, we somehow think that being independent is like this powerhouse thing. Independent women, I don't think is a, I don't think this is a triumph anymore. Maybe it was when, when we couldn't vote and now we can. And I know that wasn't that long ago, but our teenagers don't need to know, our female teenagers don't need to know how to be independent anymore because like literally we're role modeling that all there's a there's a lot of women role modeling that what we need to teach them is how to be vulnerable how to share when they're thinking about committing suicide how to share and hopefully before they ever get there 
You know what I mean? How to share uh, the fact that they're feeling, you know, they, they almost, you know, did heroin last night, you know, and, and what the peer pressure was like and how they started to think that maybe I'm not going to be liked by my friends if I don't do this. Like, what about really like demonstrating vulnerability? You know, instead of hiding things from our friends and our kids and having our chests up to our knees and just talking to God about, you know, our problems and, and you know, also I want to say, why don't we also start say, saying thank you to God every single day for all of our benefits and our blessings because we seem to often go to him with the things we want. Why, will, why don't we pour into that relationship too? But I'm saying we pour into our relationships when we're actually honest. I mean, I know people who are secretly seeing, you know, marriage counselors instead of telling people around them like, hey, you know, I'm trying to figure out how to get through this marriage thing and really make it extraordinary. Or I'm trying to figure out how to like eat properly because, you know, I used to have bulimia and I don't want to have it anymore. I don't want to have that, that temptation around me. Like, why not? You know, the only stories that are told like that are the ones on the stages that are being told to make money. And I think that these are the stories that need to be told on a regular basis to our start with our best friends and then start with your peers instead of sitting around the next event mastermind lunch. Why don't we talk about what we're vulnerable around? And it doesn't have to be with like putting this, you know, victims conversation on it. It could be like, you know, and, and by the way, that does matter. If I like, so, I, so um, after I did my talk yesterday, we, we, all the speakers on Top Motivator, which I was so blessed to be on with the icons, the Les Browns, the Lisa Nichols, the Ma Michael Beckwith, the, you know, people that, that uh, John Astraf, uh, you know, it's Wayne Dyer's crew, you know, and, and, you know, those people, I, I remember starting my business and thinking there should be something at some point. I just, I had a foresight to, like I felt it. Just like a knowing that I knew I'd live in California. And I remember saying, there's gonna be a time when the top motivators, the top personal development people are gonna turn around, they're gonna hand the baton to my generation. And I remember saying and thinking and feeling an urgency that I have to bring as many good people together as possible um, I call it the Yacht Club. I call it, you know, I call it different names. I've got, you know, like my friend Pete Vargas and, you know, um, Suzanne Evans and just really creating really good, tight-knit, generous friendships that are not about just making money. In fact, we just will all support each other no matter what, right? It's about creating that tight-knit friendships so that when the batons get passed on, we actually have the responsibility to hold them and have, and we're not going to hold them on our own. We're going to hold them because we're all going to share the stage together. And I have many clients that are ready for that as well. And I feel like that just happened. I feel like it's happening right now. Because as I'm not saying they're retiring because they're not the type of people who would retire, but they are getting to that place. And even, uh, you know, Sharon Le Letcher said, looked, Lecton said to me, I can barely pronounce her name. Um, she looked at me and said, I'm really happy that your energy is here and you're here because we are passing the baton which was like an outer body experience from when I started. Um, but we all sat and we had lunch together. And when we had lunch together, <coughs> somebody brought up Corinthians 2, which I said in the talk. And we sat around and we talked about, instead of having a surface level conversation, we all talked about what we were vulnerable in. And it was an awesome way to meet the icons and to be with the icons and to have real conversations versus conversations about all of our success or how we can help each other. It was real conversations about like where they still feel like, you know, I don't know if I can do this or, you know, and, and the help and the love that got shared around that table. And so, you know, nobody's gonna lead first but you. And so every room you're in, every, you know, mastermind you go to, I'm gonna invite you to lead with vulnerability, not lead with victim. And I'll just end on this and share the difference. Leading with victim is talking about how I'm hopeless in this situation and I'm powerless. And when you speak from that place, top performers, they wanna help, but they don't wanna hang out. 
and you want them to hang out. And so if you want them to hang out, then you need to not be helpless, which means that I'm, I'm working through this. I'm vulnerable right now because I'm, I'm weak in this situation, really is what you're saying, but you're not being weak and being victim. You're like, I'm weak in this situation because I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to, you know, parent my child. I don't know how to, you know, do marriage better. I don't know how to, you know, lose these X amount of pounds when I'm going on dialysis, or I don't know how to, you know, do a talk in front of 25,000 people, or I don't know how to do a webinar or whatever. And, but I'm really committed to figuring this out. And then they want to see some action. Like, what are you doing? Who are you investing in? Right? Who are you investing? Where are you putting your money and your time? Because that determines on whether or not you're going to be a top, top performer. Or are you still laying in the fetal position in the middle of the floor, which is okay to be at, but you want to be getting yourself off the ground and going, okay, let's do this again. And so I encourage whatever room you're walking in today that you are a leader. And that means that you're leading a conversation. Are you leading? Oh, God, the pressure is hard. And you're just being strong and independent. Because honestly, I think that's weak. Because you're getting love because of the pressure. And I think you're made for more. I think that you're stronger than that. I think you can show your strengths, you can show your vulnerability, and you can show your wisdom all generously and be able to create the results that you want. Because somebody's figured out what you're struggling with. But if you're not vulnerable enough to share it or you share it from a place of victim, then people will help, but they won't hang out. And you need an army of people to hang out to be able to create the mission that was put on your heart. All right, you guys. I will see you later. I will see you uh, tomorrow morning on 7 a.m. Coffee with Shanda. Please share this with somebody that needs to hear it. Please comment and tell me, did anything I say make a difference for you today? Talk to you soon.